Using ChatGPT in a browser is great, but to implement it in Microsoft Power Automate is awesome. Here I'll show you how to do it using a REST API call. My name is Anders Jensen and I come from I Love Automation. In Microsoft Power Automate, we click Create. We will choose an instant cloud flow as that is the most simple flow and we want to understand everything about connecting to ChatGPT and not necessarily setting it up in an advanced flow. So here you click Instant Cloud Flow. And don't worry, we can easily build more advanced flows once we understand this. Here we will call it ChatGPT Demo and we will manually trigger our flow and we'll click Create. Up here, you'll click the trigger Click add an input. Here we will choose text. And here we can say something like chat GPT prompt. Over here we can say ask chat GPT about something. And let me just delete this one here. So it looks like this. Then we will use the output of this trigger in our REST API call. So Click new step. Here you will search for an HTTP and go down here and choose this one. The method that we want to use that is post since we want to send some data to ChatGPT or in our case OpenAI. We need a URL and I prepared a helping document for this video. You can download it by using the link in the video description below. It looks like this. Let me open it. So to get the URL, you will mark this address here that is get the newest URL, copy that one here. The reason is that this URL changes a lot. So open up a new tab and paste it in. What we are going to do is this URL down here. Go mark it, control C to copy it back to Power Automate. Control V, paste it in here and just do a backspace so it's not multi-lined. Then we need a header. Here we will put in the authorization. So here I write authorization like this. Be careful. If you don't write it like this, it will not work. Over here in the value, you write error and then a space. And now we need an API key. To get the API key, you navigate to this URL up here under API key, open a new tab and paste it in. Here we need to either log in or sign up. In case you don't have an account, simply just click sign up. It's free and you even get free credits. Once we are logged in, it looks like this. Click create new secret key and copy the key from here. Back to Power Automate. So after barrel and space, control V, paste in the key. Now we need to fill in this body here. You can find that in the document as well. This is the body that I found worked the best. So the configuration that worked the best, I will explain what it stands for in a little while. Now just copy it, including this curly bracket in the start and in the end, and go back here. Control V, paste it in here. What this is, is that we have the model that is text Da Vinci 003. That is a GPT model. It's not chat GPT per se, but it's built on the same engine. Then we have a prompt. This prompt is the output from our trigger and it could be any trigger we wanted or even another action. So I delete this input here, looks like this. Then I go over to dynamic content. In case you don't see it, it might look like this. So simply just click it again and we will scroll down. We call it chat GPT prompt. Remember, otherwise, if you haven't named it, it will be the input. So we're using this output here in our body. Max tokens, that's a thousand. That stands for how many tokens ChatGPT should use from your account. A thousand tokens is about 750 words. You have about 900,000 tokens for free. So that is around 700,000 words. That's a lot. And the temperature is zero. That is randomness in output. That can range from zero to one, where zero, zero is very low randomness in output. We are very strict. 
ChatGPT is not very creative, or it doesn't allow ChatGPT to be very creative. N equals one. That is how many completions to generate for each prompt. The higher, the more completions and the more token you use. So be careful. I recommend one. Finally, you can define some words, up to four words, and if ChatGPT face them, it will stop using more tokens. Now let's go test it. It's that easy to connect to ChatGPT. So I save, I test manually, and then I click here, I need a prompt. So I'll ask him what's a JSON, and then I'll run the flow. I click done. It will usually take like five, seven seconds. There you go, four seconds. If I move into this, this HTTP here, I go down to show raw outputs. This is the output that we get back. It's in the JSON format. And you can always see this because the curly bracket in the start and in the end. The interesting part for us, that is in the body here, then we move further down the tree into choices. This choices is an array. You can see this by this hard bracket here and here. We only have one element in. So we want to look in the choices array, the first element, and then we want to move into text because here we have our result. You can see here, JSON, JavaScript, object notation is a lightweight, blah, blah, blah. So this is what we're going to extract when we want to handle the response from ChatGPT. It will look like this. Let me close it and let me click edit here. So we choose a new step. Here we will find a compose and we want to do something with this HTTP. In case you want to rename it, we could, for example, click these three dots and click rename. Then it's more easy that you do it now. It could be, for example, we will say chat GPT HTTP because we will use the name of this one here to grab it. So we could, of course, print out the body, but that will print out the entire body. Here we want to move in and only get the text response from ChatGPT. We need to create an expression by clicking here. Then we write to get the output of this ChatGPT HTTP. I write outputs and here we have the IntelliSense. So I can just press tab, then a parenthesis, a single quotation marks. And now we write the name of this action up here. So that will be ChatGPT. We don't use spaces, we use underscores like this, HTTP like this. Then we want it to move into the body and then the choices. So I go out here, press a question mark, have a hard bracket, single quotation marks, and then I say body, forward slash, choices like this. I want the first element in choices. So I go out again, and since this is zero indexed, we will say zero to grab the first element. If we had two elements and we wanted to grab the second one, that would be one and so forth. Then we wanted to go into text. So another hard brackets, single quotation marks, and then text. I can click OK here. Power Automate will sometime tell you that this is invalid. This is just a bug in Power Automate. You can pr press OK, press OK once more, it will work. Now let's go test it. And here we click test, we will manually test it. Here I can say what's the capital in India. Let's run our flow. It will usually run in three to seven seconds. Now you can see here it took one second. For some reason the compose takes a little bit longer. No, oh, zero seconds. Click here. And now you can see the capital is New Delhi. But as you can see, we have some white spaces unwanted here in the beginning. Let's go trim that before we're done by handling the output. So I go in here. What I will recommend here is that you type in trim, parentheses start, press end on your keyboard or simply just navigate to the end of this expression and a parentheses end. Since Power Automate often bug here, what I recommend when you edit these expressions is to control A, control C, delete this one over here, press the expression again, control V. Yes, I know it sounds silly. Click OK, 
Now we have updated it. Then we click save. We test it. Here we can ask what's the three most important skills to learn in Power Automate. And you could, of course, now we just do it manually. What you want to do might be to pass emails from customers, send it to chat DPT, write it into your system, call desktop flows or whatever you want. The possibilities are endless. Here we have run it. If I go into Compose, there you go. Learn more advanced Power Automate. Join the I Love Automation Discord community with more than 6,000 automation developers. It's free and your invitation is right up here.